All right, uh, this is one of my videos where I'll just cover a node, and that's it. This is the set node or the var node, and uh, you'll just see how I use it, how handy it comes in. The, the docs are decent and things like that. So yeah, uh, kick back, enjoy, uh, learn a few things about this key node to everything I build, really. And it's just hope it helps. Hope you learn some things from it, and I'll have a lot more uh, node-focused videos. All right, so let's take our first look at it. And here I usually use it right in the beginning of a workflow. So we just grab it using the word set. And sometimes I call it var, vars, uh, which is short for variables. It's maybe a more developer thing. But it's a place we're kind of saving some information or state. Uh, and then what you'll see here is that when we open it, I can put in some particular keys and values. Now, why I do it here is this. Um, imagine now we want to reach into an application and get some data out of it. So let me grab something I've been working on recently for a customer is monday.com. When we grab monday.com, um, we could get many items and it will want a board, um, you know, name and then a board or group ID. And so these are the things we want to make dynamic because in this case, maybe this is my staging Monday that I use for testing. And when we deploy it, I want to then um, change this, just this, this um, variable set or bars. So like imagine now I'm talking to Monday in five different nodes here and I have to go update them all. Um, you know, that just is really horrible. So this is one way to centralize some of the key information about your application uh, based on the particular environment, or just so, there's some conveniences here too that I'll show later on. Uh, so in that case, I moved over the group ID and the board ID. Now notice I run it here to get it green. Uh, that's so we can see it on the left here before it wasn't there, the board ID, but now it is. And then we could just drag it over. Now we have access to that variable here. So again, just imagine now that we did this and, um, you know, five nodes later, we have to do it now in five places when we deploy it. So a good trick here. All right, let's look at this next one, which is really, uh, really important for getting your data down to an amount that uh, might fit better in, in LLM or just overall to return. I'm going to use the aggregate node to take all these rows, all three of them, and push them into the LLM in one go. Now imagine if there was 20 or 30 rows and then all that data that's useless. So what we want to do is right before the um, uh, uh, aggregate, we want to just kind of suss out which row, what data we want, what field and values. Now I'll talk about the aggregate uh, node in some other video, but in this one, we're going to just take the fields we want. Now I'll take name and state, but you know, if I knew Monday a bit more, or if I had more real data here, uh, I might have descriptions and other data that I want to bring in to help NADN uh, know, uh, sorry, to help the AI know, you know, what's up with this list and, and what's the real data. But we're just going to give it this little subset of data. Um, after we do this, we go from that huge amount of JSON you saw a moment ago, and we are now going to see a big, uh, a big uh, improvement. Now I'm going to run these individually, so we can go over here. And then we see uh, a, a way better result. Like, look at that. If we were worried about tokens, um, we don't have to be anymore. And also, if you just put a, like a two JSON string, I think it is, it just kind of makes it um, string. I think the other one would work. But if you ever get those errors, like this is an object or this is an array, you can just do that to help make it a string. But that's it. Look how much less data we have. Look how much like less token room that will take up in that particular AI. And even though you can have a ton of token room, just look how much uh, you might give it the right data instead of a whole bunch of confusing data. All right, so now I'm going to go over my favorite one of all, and it's called Merged Sets. And horrible name. But look at how I'm going to use this here. Here's a common chat model where I have a chat agent that can do things. This one can do Monday.com. But what if it had uh, many tools here and it had a complex scenario that I want to reuse in different situations? So I create a merged set. And in doing this set, I define a couple of consistent uh, keys and values. And then the AI system can use those keys and values. So yes, I could have changed this, but what really matters is that the session in the chat input 
get those values and keys. So all these different triggers have different keys from the start. Some of them don't have any, like the scheduled one. So when I run one of these, I want to define the, the, the values for those keys so we can line them up. So now we can see the keys and the values. This one has its own prompt because, hey, I'm going to run this every day and I want to report. So then when it runs, it passes those values on. Now a really cool feature here too is that I define the uh, source. So if you look, it sent an email. But how did it know to do that? Well, every tar trigger has a source, and then that source will lead me to the uh, route that I want to go. We can see send email, but... Um... Will lead me to that route that I want to go. So now I can, in this case, have an API uh, trigger. And when that trigger gets hit from the API, we map the keys and values. So by the time this set hits the merge set, it's all lined up. And because the source is API, when it goes through, it's going to come out that other side as an API response, which whatever, could be JSON or whatever. But that's it. You can reuse this and add as many triggers as you want, different schedules, email, telegram, and it all just keep working the way you want with this one brain.